plain sight. If we just actually see what's going on, guys, with the spirit, the truth is in plain sight. And the Holy Spirit told me, Joanne, Obama has been in the White House this entire time and America needs to wake up. All right, so remember how I said that in the dream, Obama was super tall. Like, I literally had to crack my neck to look at him, okay? The Holy Spirit revealed to me that him being super tall in the dream represents his power, intimidation, pride, and inevitable worship, okay? So the Holy Spirit told me, Obama will come back to power. So I was like, how is this possible? You know, Obama already served two terms. He's already been president, right? And then the Holy Spirit reminded me of what I said in that dream. When I approached Obama, right, the second thing I said was, but you're the beast of revelation. So the Holy Spirit revealed to me that Obama is going to come back into power and Obama is going to be the beast, okay? He's the beast in Revelation 13. Now, I know this is going to shake up the black community, but we need to do better. You guys. Now this video is for educational purposes only. This video came across my page and others were curious about it as well. I'm gonna teach you guys how to test prophecy. This is no hate to this creator, but let's test it to see if what she is saying is true. The Apostle Paul tells us, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. So it's biblical to test prophetic words and there are multiple ways to do this. This is one and one of the most important ways by scripture. Is Obama the beast from the book of Revelation chapter 13? Let's evaluate. To do this, we have to start in Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel 7, Daniel sees four beasts. I won't read it all, but I'll give a brief summary. He sees a beast that's a lion, a bear, a leopard, and an unnamed beast. Now, each of the beasts are kingdoms on the earth. The lion was the kingdom of Babylon. This is known throughout history. They literally had the lion of Babylon. The bear was the Medes and Persians. Now, the leopard was intriguing because that is Alexander the Great's Grecian Empire. And it had four wings and four heads. It's intriguing because after Alexander the Great, four other leaders took over. The fourth beast in ancient times was the Roman Empire, with an extension until the last days. Notice how he says it has ten horns. And as he was considering the horns, there was another horn, the little horn, that came up from among them, and then three were plucked up. And there in this horn were the eyes like the eyes of a man, on a mouth speaking pompous word. The little horn, who we know as the biblical antichrist, he rises once the ten horns are in place, and three of them are subdued. Now, if you continue reading the book of Daniel, it's believed that these are Egypt, Libya, and Ethiopia. He's going to speak pompous words against God. He's going to persecute the saints, which are the Jews at that time. The Lord Jesus himself will come back to defeat them. Now, here's where it gets interesting. When you go to the book of Revelation chapter 13, John says, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Does that sound familiar? And on his horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, the feet were like the feet of a bear, and the mouth like the mouth of a lion. Do you see the parallels here? Ten horns, lion, bear, leopard, Revelation 13. You go to Daniel 7, you see a lion, you see a bear, you see a leopard, ten horns. Same are mentioned in Daniel as for Revelation. But the only difference is this. Revelation 13 is when the Antichrist stands up fully in power. Revelation 6, he goes out conquering and to conquer the rider on the white horse. Revelation 13, he's in full power. And he has the Grecian Empire locations, the uh, Mede and the Persian Empire locations, and the Babylonian Empire locations under his belt, which is what makes him the most powerful beast and why people say who can make war against him. After this video, go back and look at a map and look at all the locations that the Grecian, the Babylonian, and the Mede and Persian Empire had. Now imagine all those converged together under one man's rule. That's why he's the beast. But now let's go back to the original question. Is this beast Barack Obama? The Bible in verse 8 calls him the little horn. It says that he comes up, he subdues uh, three horns of the ten horns that's already established, right? Then of course he continues his conquests, all that stuff. When Obama came to power, were there ten leaders in place, ten kings? No, there wasn't. Yeah, but Ty, he's going to come back into power and ten kings can be in place by then. Some of you may have just thought that. But here's the other thing to notice. Notice how it says the little horn. Horns in the Bible symbolize authority. When he rises, he won't be that well known for his authority. He won't have high authority. Barack Obama was already listed as one of the most powerful presidents in America. Not only that, but at a time he was listed as the world's most powerful person. And the word that she gave noted that he was in power right now. People just don't see it. And some of you probably saw the full word, but that would mean that he has a higher level of authority. Not to mention in the Bible, the Antichrist will be from the area of Assyria or ancient day Babylon in that location. The fact that Obama's not from there, the fact that he was a president in the United States of America, the fact he was and is real powerful, and the whole world knows him already, he's the farthest thing from the little horn, meaning he can't be the biblical Antichrist. 
But Ty, what about all these people having dreams and visions? There is a false Holy Spirit that goes around giving people dreams and visions of stuff that's not true. Or at times the Holy Spirit will give people dreams and visions, but then the person's own personal biases, they get involved. And believe me, I believe in dreams and visions 100%. I have a track record, all glory to God, with over 200 plus prophetic words that's come to pass, documented and dated. So I believe prophetic words, but I also believe that they need to be tested. And the test is not one right word here, another right word there, because a broken clock is right twice a day. But it's a lifestyle practice of consistency and prophetic accuracy along with living in link with Jesus Christ and prophetic accountability to the scriptures. So going back to testing this prophetic word, it's wrong. So I hope this helped you guys with understanding how to test a little bit prophetic words. I'll do other videos like this. Hit follow to stay updated. Switching subjects. September's class is going to be geared towards those that struggle with gluttony, those that want to understand the superpowers of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit at a greater level, revealing the mysterious links between the human body, the tabernacle, and the Garden of Eden, because they do parallel, and a lot more. This is going to be one of the most detailed class, if not the most detailed class that I've ever done. To join from TikTok, go to my bio, click the Eventbrite link in my bio. From YouTube, go to my bio and click the event bright link in my bio. It is not a live class. It's pre-recorded. So if you work, you have the links to watch at a later date. See you there.